Welcome back to Noir Alley. I'm your host, Eddie Muller, coming to you from the majestic Grand Lake Theater in Oakland, California. The movie we have for you today, Detour from 1945, has legendary status as a landmark in the film noir movement. I first saw the film back in the 1970s when I was still a teenager in the early stages of my obsession with older movies. And I'll admit, a lot of that interest stemmed from an infatuation with the actresses of the classic Hollywood era, especially the bad girls like Gloria Graham, Marie Windsor, and Audrey Totter, sexy fixtures in what I'd come to know as film noir. Then one day, an older, more experienced movie buff informed me I hadn't seen nothing till I'd seen an actress named Ann Savage in a grungy little movie called Detour. She played a character known only as Vera, whom this guy touted as the meanest woman in the history of the movies. But if you act wise, well, mister, you'll pop in the jail so fast it'll give you the bins. Seeing as this was long before the advent of TCM, or even the invention of the video cassette recorder, there was no way to see Detour except to diligently comb the weekly TV guide and hope it showed up on Movies Till Dawn or some other late show broadcast. And that's exactly how I first experienced it setting an alarm to wake up after midnight and watching transfixed in the dead of night. And dare I say, that may be the perfect way to absorb this weird, unsettling film when you're not quite sure whether you're watching it or dreaming it. Either way, Vera is a character that will forever stay in your head. Detour was made by Poverty Row Studio PRC, an acronym for Producers Releasing Corporation. Folks in Hollywood joke that it stood for pretty rotten crap. And the name may have been valid until director Edgar G. Ulmer started working for the low rent outfit. He was one of a number of talented directors who'd emigrated to Hollywood from Germany to escape the rise of the Nazis. But Ulmer was blackballed at every major studio after he had an affair with Shirley Castle. She was the wife of director Max Alexander, whose uncle, Carl Lemley, was the founder of Universal Pictures. Carl Lemley Jr. saw to it that Ulmer was relegated to Poverty Row for the rest of his filmmaking career. But that couldn't stop such a wildly creative director, even if he was forced to work with the most minuscule budgets. Ulmer adapted Detour from Martin Goldsmith's far more expansive novel, which told parallel narratives of Al Roberts, a lovelorn New York pianist, and his girlfriend, Sue Harvey, who leaves him for a shot at Hollywood stardom. Ulmer streamlined the story into a harrowing tale of one man's cross-country misadventure and how his life runs off the rails after encountering a hitchhiking harpy from hell. Ann Savage and Tom Neal had previously made several pictures together when they were under contract at Columbia. And for various reasons, both had fallen out of favor at the studio and they ended up at PRC, which in 1945 was like falling from the curb to the gutter. But under Ulmer's direction and working on a super short schedule with a meager budget of barely $30,000, Neal and Savage ended up making the film for which they are most remembered. Few films of the era got so much out of so little. Detour has long been a touchstone for low-budget filmmakers, not only because of the resourcefulness Ulmer displays as a director, but because the film was unique in its use of an unreliable narrator who relates, true or not, the wild, improbable tale of his downfall. Along with director Arthur Ripley's The Chase, made the following year, this is the rare Hollywood movie of the era that has the odd rhythm and unsettling tone of a genuine nightmare. Okay, fasten your seatbelts and don't stop for strangers. From 1945, here is Detour. <laughs> 